what's up there everyone please subscribe to mahogany sweets i will be dropping content as much as i can i'm going to try and be more consistent but anyway i wanted to come to you this video is about the drake and Nicki minaj tension problem they're falling out he dropped an interview last night on rap radar that was over two hours long he mentioned and discussed his relationship with kanye west pusha t meek mill even jay-z but he did not speak about him and Nicki Minaj falling out. But I'm going to. And what I have assessed and why I think that relationship fell apart. But I want to take you to the industry, right? In the industry, you have the different labels. Look at the labels as gangs, right? You had Cash Money. You had No Limit. You had Bad Boys. You had Rockefeller. Um, so these would be considered, let's just say, a gang or a block of neighborhood, right the music is their product and you have some neighborhoods gangs this banging you know they making a lot of money they making a lot of noise they being seen they heard of they have influence things like that and other gangs of course in the streets as you know right i'm using a street analogy so for those who are not savvy to that lifestyle hopefully this will give you some clarity but um they will come and be like, oh, okay, well, they're making money. They got territory. We want that. So we need to come and take them out, right? So Jay-Z wanted to come and clear out some territory, take over some territory that cash money was holding. So in that, you would have to take out Nicki Minaj, big global massive star, Drake, big global massive star, um, and Wheezy, big global um superstar so wheezy hands was tied behind his back at the time because he was in a bad business contract with baby right so he pretty much was already sitting aside so that was one they didn't even have to knock down his hands were already tied nikki i believe this is where the fallout came nikki hooked up with meek mill which I believe that she was picked to be with him, so that would tie her hands. So she hooked up with Meek Mill. This puts her in a situation where it would be very messy and a, a thin line for her to walk on her loyalty to her label and her label mate, Drake. But also now I'm in bed with this young man. That gives her a sense of loyalty to Meek Mill. Meek Mill is with... Um, well, Dream Chasers is his thing, but he's with Rick Ross on MMG, right? But he has a connection with Jay-Z. Jay-Z is his mentor. Um, Jay-Z and Rick Ross have a relationship as well. So Jay-Z decided to use Meek Mill as the sniper to come after Drake. And since Nicki was in relationship in bed with him, that pretty much tied her hands. And she made her choice. I personally believe that she possibly knew, like, okay, well, they're coming after cash money. I believe that she probably knew. It was talking and rumblings in the industry. Um, so she was like, okay, do I stick with this, which could be a sinking ship, or do I jump board another ship to protect myself from whatever the fallout may be and i think that she probably looked at it as this jay-z this would be the winning team and she clearly had made her decision now drake probably was none the wiser of like oh, okay well she's linking up with him now i'm seeing her to take pictures and hanging out with jay-z meek mill and beyonce because y'all might not have had paid attention to that but that's what happened she got with me and then she was in bed with jay-z and beyonce so um she probably looked at it as she felt that that was a winning side she was going to go there. Or maybe she did not know initially that this was to come. And that was just like, oh, okay, well, he's interested in me. I'm dating him. Cool. But eventually she realized like, oh, okay, this is a takedown. So whether she knew that prior to her decision of getting with Meek or after, she still jumped ships and did not come back over to even attempt to help um, Drake. Although... She knew Wheezy could not aid him because he was had his hands tied. So anyway, Meek was given the task of going after Drake and knocking him down. And Meek fumbled that ball, right? So Drake ended up, because if you listen, Drake tells you, even in the last interview he did, which was last night, which he's also already stated in his music, that they tried to come for his juggler. They were attempting to end his career. 
um, Meek Mill specifically with the ghost writing, which it did really did affect his career. It did not end it, but it took him out of certain um, sections of how he would be viewed in hip hop. You know, because you have the pop star lane, you have the rap. Um, rap purist lane you have the hip-hop lane and drake was trying to ride in all of those lanes and with the ghost writing comments that um he made that did take him out of the lane of being revered as a hip-hop purist or um, a rap purist should you say although right it did not affect him in his pop career um so Meek fumbled the ball because Meek did his task sloppy. And if you paid attention to the events that transpired after Meek lost that battle, you will see he was punished for that. Meek was punished for being a sloppy ass hitman or whatever. But um, so Meek was punished for that by the person who sent him the industry to send him, as well as by losing the beef. He course took that L publicly on that end but it also affected him with his ties of what his job was to do that he did not successfully fulfill right so Drake later sat back on that and he was pissed about it because he felt okay Nikki you really screwed me as far as you left me out here to dry you um I believe that he feels that she knew what was up and she jumped ship. So, right, he has a problem with her concerning that. They're not going to say these certain things publicly, as you already see, because although he may mention his beef with Pusha and things like that, those are different relationships with Nikki that whether they was intimate or not, they still have a very close relationship, label mates, as well as came up in the game together. So he took that hard, you know, and I would imagine so, like, wow, we've been doing all this together, and then you leave me out to dry like that. But luckily, he came out successful in that, but that does not change the fact that Nikki jumped ship on him, right? And then if you pay attention, since Meek fumbled the ball on what his task was to do, and he was punished by that. She also turned around later and left him because now you are, that was supposed to elevate Meek another level by taking Drake out. And it did not do that. So, of course, Nikki, she got tired of him and left him. Well, anyway, then you go and look at the um, fact that, what is that girl? Remy Ma had stated in music that she was told to come and snipe Nikki. Nikki also probably looked at it like, let me go inside with them because whatever they got up their sleeve, I don't need or want the heat of them coming down on me, which Remy still turned around later and did sniper. Remy was also sent to snipe Nikki as well to take down the whole cash money um, conglomerate. Um, so they had sent Meek after Drake and they had sent Nikki, I mean Remy Ma after Nikki. And as you see, she slaughtered her. That's why she... Call did what she did because Remy Ma successfully did her job as a hitman, as a sniper. And she took um, Nicki Minaj down, which made room for Cardi to come in and take that spot. But anyway, if you pay attention, after Remy came out with Sheether and successfully fulfilled her hit job, her career elevated. This is how it goes in the industry. A lot of these things y'all might not notice or pay attention to in industry politics and, and stuff like this, but um, that's how they move around as far as using new, fresh, younger stars or even older stars to take out um, their predecessors, those who are on top, those who are running things or whatever. So Remy has successfully taken out Nicki Minaj, which elevated her career. Um, they gave the spot to Cardi B, which is trash. But anyway, so that is how um, that worked on her end. And then when she was, had that heat on her and it was coming after her like that, she wanted she played innocent with Drake when all of that hit the fan. Like, okay, I ain't know nothing. Um, I didn't know what to do. That was my man. You should understand and respect that. And Drake played along with her like, cool, right? When they came after Nikki, Nikki wanted Wheezy and Drake to come and help her and save her, which is what she was supposed to do as a conglomerate. If you pay attention to rap beef and when um, some in these groups, when some are falling off right, there are other people on their label or who they're in a group with. They come and try and pick up the slap to boost them back up and get them where they need to be, which was what Wheezy or Nicki Minaj would have been able to do from Drake, do for Drake if Drake had started to come down um, to save his career. 
So Nikki had went to Drake and Weezy to help save her career when Sheether had came out. If you listen to the bars that Drake did on the songs that he did release with her, which one was No Frauds. I think that was the only one he actually even participated on was No Frauds. Listen and pay attention to his bars and where he at. He is, it's as if he was like, okay, I'm going to fulfill this obligation. Because at that time, he probably was even kind of still on the fence. Like, should I believe her that she um, was innocent in all of this? Should I believe that she didn't know what to do when her hands were tied? I think he was still kind of on the fence of, okay, is this really what it is? Or am I just being paranoid and overthinking it? Which, no, his first mind was right. This chick played you. But anyway, so... But in the, since he was on a fence, if you listen to his lyrics on it, it was like, okay, I'm going to fulfill this obligation. But at the same time, he, um, due to his lyrics, his energy and everything, you could even tell right then that it was off and that he was feeling some type of way or whatever. But anyway, so that happened. And then, um, Kanye fell out with Jay-Z, right? You remember that? So, if you listen to a song that Kanye has his own jealousy with Drake, they have, as Pushy even said, they have this weird, toxic relationship. It's a love-hate relationship. But anyway, Jay Drake wanted to make, I'm not Drake, Kanye wanted to make up with Jay-Z. And in one of his songs, he said, I did these two wrongs to right you. Talking about trying to right his wrong that he did with Jay-Z by what he did. Um, one of them was sending Push to Snipe. Drake, and as you've seen, Push was more successful with his hitman job, which is why his career, he was rewarded, was was elevated. But Kanye still had his own selfish motives of why he sent Push after Drake, because it wasn't just to benefit Jay, which by that time, Jay was over it. Him and Drake had already even worked out their issues, um, and Jay was pretty much over bringing Drake down a peg or two. He... So Kanye was like a dollar short, a dollar late. Um, I mean, a day late, a dollar short. But Kanye has sent push to snipe him. He was a bit more successful. Well, actually a lot more successful at it. And then he wanted to try and play like his hands clean. And he ain't had nothing to do with it. Which if y'all pay attention and listen to how they interact. Who is connecting and linking with who? Because they have squads in the industry just like at your school. They got squads at your college. They got squads at, in your family. They got squads, you know. In the industry, they have the same thing. Pay attention to the people who connect them with each other. Who got beef? Who's sending what subliminal bars to who? And how they aligning themselves. Oh, excuse me. I'm all burping, drinking pop. Um, so, that is why, just to sum it up, that is why Drake and Nicki Minaj fell out because... Nikki jumped, shipped on him, left him out to dry, didn't give him a heads up. She knew they was coming after his head, and she did not care. She tried to get herself out the way to be protected and um, stay on top. And then, as you see, they came after her, too. They came after all of them. Well, except Weezy, because they didn't have to come after Weezy, because he was already sitting down. But that is how the game go. That is what happened. And Drake is rightfully so to be pissed at her and to not trust her. Because it's one thing to make up like 50 Cent said. You, um, he said, love your enemies because you always knew who know who they are. Your friends change. And the reason why he can make up with some of these other people who he has had beef and conversation with. Because number one, based off how minuscule the beef was or what it was over, right, the issue was. But secondly, because he did not have that close of a relationship with them. When it's someone who you're cool with like that, know that what Nikki did to him was a betrayal. And this wasn't just some, um, oh, we mad, so we throwing shots at each other. They were literally coming to take his career, to dead his career. And that's how he feel. That's what it was. And that's why he has this issue with Nikki. Nikki continued to try and play, and she, which she, of course, taking shots at him too. If y'all have listened to some of her music some of those verses on features she's taking um shots at him too but she has continued to try and play the innocent it wasn't my fault i didn't know what was going on roll and drake's not having that he know he she's smarter than that which she very much so is but also that's where um what do you call it that's where karma is a mug because she sold him out to try and protect herself and they still came after her anyway they still sent remy the sniper 
and they still gave Cardi and tried to elevate Cardi as being better than her, even though anyone with half a brain should know that Cardi has nothing going on Nicki Minaj in any area, not in class, not in intellect, not in creativity, not in music or skill set, talent, any of that. But anyway, um, so that is how that all played out and he still has an axe to grind with her because she betrayed him in the ultimate way. And I was looking at Wheezy to see how Wheezy felt about this. It seems like to me Wheezy is looking at it like, hey, y'all brother and sister, that's between y'all. I ain't got nothing to do with that. When I think Wheezy should reprimand Nikki. Or Wheezy might look at it like, okay, she's already being reprimanded for her actions. Um, I'm not sure. But... Weezy just seems to be wiping his hands up it like, hey, I got my love for her. She ain't did nothing to me. And I'm going to leave this between Drake and Nikki. But that's why they beefing. And go check out the Rap Radar interview if you are interested. But like I said, he doesn't actually mention his um, now toxic relationship and tension with him and Nikki. But he does mention his other beefs. And he does state that him and Push, though, will never actually make him. Oh, and that's the other thing. Like, 50 Cent in his interview said that you don't go after the sniper. You go after the person who sent the sniper after you. Because if you take out the sniper and not the person who put the bread on your head, then they're going to continue to put bread on your head. So, at first, I was very, very upset with Drake for only going mainly after Kanye instead of Push. But that's true. He knew who sent the sniper, which was Kanye. So that's why his bars and his aggression was focused on Kanye and not Pusha. Because he knew Pusha would just send to do a job. And anybody else would possibly come and try and take that job anyway. Let me take care of Kanye. And it's sad because he still hasn't even successfully been able to take out Kanye. It's, it's sad. I feel bad for Drake because, yeah, they came after him. And the person who sent his biggest blow to his career to him was Kanye. And he has attempted to get rid of Kanye and dead Kanye. And he is not successful at it, has not been successful at it. Kanye, in my opinion, has tried to get rid of Kanye and cancel his own career. And he's not successful at it. It has been evident that Kanye can pretty much damn near do anything and it is not going to affect his career. People love him that much. He has that cult-like following and he has that support from people. And I don't know if it's his charisma. I don't know if it's because people feel sympathy for him or because people just want to acknowledge the greatness that he once was or the greatness that he still possessed. They are not getting rid of Kanye. So I feel bad for Drake because it's like all these people have done this wrong to him and he kind of doesn't have any way really to get back to them. And that's why he made the statement in the song, I guess luck is on your side. I'm stuck into my role as a good guy. Drake for image, for perception, for um, for deals, you know, endorsements has to play the role of the good guy. He cannot go as low down and dirty as a push. He cannot um, take his brand there. So I do believe him when he said he had a song and he was going to go there with Push and Kanye. I, be I, I believe it. I believe it. Um, so he just did the best he can with conveying his message, which to me, side eight is phenomenal. He, he did his thing on that with the chips in hand that he was dope. And if you really listen to the lyrics, he breaks it down of why everything went the way that it did and how he felt about it. And he made the in your windows about the stuff that he wanted to guess, get greasy with in a diss song, but couldn't do it that overtly he had to do it covertly so he pretty much let us know that he fucked Kim and that Kim was throwing a pussy at him he told us that he pretty much let us know and to me he was making an in your window about um push wife when he mentioned her name he was either making an in your window that I could have her if he wanted to or watch out I'll come after her um, or he was making anyone though that he has already had her. So I understand Push being pissed because if you pay attention to Drake's track record, one of the things that he does in beef is go after the women of his competitors, of the people he keep beefing with. And, and he fucks some Eskimo brothers, as Joe Budden say. So I believe that, um, 
Push was like, oh, no, we're not about to play that game. Not with my wife. You know what I'm saying? So, I understand why Push went where he went. And Drake expressed that he understands why Push went there once he went there. Um, but, anyway. What was else I was about to say? Oh, and he... So, he let us know through, through side A what he wanted to tell us about these people. He just had to do it in a covert way. He could not do it overtly raw and dirty in the mud because of his brand, his image and things of that, him being stuck into this perception of being the good guy, the likable, um, not threatening black guy who has, um, public appeal, you know? So that's just all I wanted to say. Y'all give me your thoughts on what y'all think the Nikki. Oh, the other reason why Nikki and Drake was beefing because, okay, I don't know if y'all subscribe to this. And when I say subscribe to this, I mean, like, believe in the industry putting relationships together that's not real. Some of them turn real, but they pretty much really just business relationships that um, might have some still love and care there. But anyway, Drake was going after Rihanna, right? He wanted to couple up with, with someone. Rihanna chose not to be with him. She didn't want him, but he also tried to couple up with Nicki Minaj because you have to look at it. When these massive stars, they have to be with someone who is either projected to turn into what they are or who already is or on that upward scale where they at. Anyway, so he can't, he couldn't just go and be with uh, anybody. He had to find someone who was just as big as him or if not bigger or at least going to come into being as big as him. Which is why Nicki Minaj decided to leave Meek because everyone know Nicki and Meek were not on equal footing um, as far as their popularity and their superstardom. So Meek was supposed to take out Drake, which would elevate him to being on Nicki's level because he would be rewarded. His success would go through the roof. He would have more money to where now he would be on equal billing footing with her. And he would be seen as worthy to be there because he took out one of the biggest in the industry. And he's with one of the biggest women in the industry. So when he fumbled that bag, of course, Nicki had to leave him then because she... Then it really looked like a... Since he fumbled the bag, it looked like a she really has um not not dating in her standard of what she should be. But anyway, so Drake had chose and looked at Nikki as a viable candidate to be um in a relationship with since she was just as big as him. The history was already there. It looked like a perfect love match story, basically. But Nikki chose not to be with him. And so, not only did she choose not to be with him, because that was another issue, and if you paid attention to the bars that Nikki sent to him, she stays in there like, oh, you just mad because I ain't want you. I didn't choose you. It is deeper than that, though. It's deeper than that. It's not just because she didn't choose to be with him. It's because she chose to be with someone who was coming after his head that was then considered just a dusty come up. Oh, excuse me. I'm just burping so much. But anyway, um... Now I lost my thing, I thought. Oh, right. So she chose to get with a Meek Mill who was supposed to be elevated but wasn't. And at the time, he was not up there. So, yeah, Drake took a, a offense to the way all of the whole situation laid. Not just the fact that Nikki chose not to be with him, which is what she's trying to sum it up as. This attention is just he's mad that um, he couldn't be with her. No. He was fine with the fact that she chose not to be with him. It's the fact that she chose to go get with this dude who wasn't on your level or my level and then you participated in him trying to bring my entire career and empire now as well as cash money because as you see cash money is technically broken up now it is not together where at that time although wheezy hands were tight nikki and drake were still keeping cash money its name and its brand the label afloat and once she jumped ship, it brought all that down. Wheezy cannot build that back up to himself. As you see, he's not even representing Cash Money anymore. Drake is not. Drake is um, representing Ovo, his own thing. And Nicki Minaj is not re um, representing Cash Money anymore. So the whole entire label, which was partly the main goal, which was to dead that empire, Cash Money empire. But it also was just to move... Um, Drake's product from off the streets or from being as viable and successful as it was.
and I'm not sure so much if that's totally happened, but, um, yeah, they messed everything up. But anyway, so that's all. Uh, leave y'all comments on what y'all think concerning um, the Drake and Nikki relationship. What caused it to fall apart, crumble. And also leave your comments and thoughts on how you feel about my take on it and what I deem the true issue to be between their relationship. Subscribe. <laughs>